Okay, so in our previous step, we had uh, created the RFQ and uh, filled out all the necessary uh, information that we needed in order to send it out. And here we have it, it's the 000021. So I'm just going to click on that. Um, and you can see that we have here the photocover, it was uh, 20 pieces, 2000, minimum 40,000 we're asking. And on the header level, we were sending it out to these three vendors. Two of those are, uh, I've set up as uh, vendor collaboration vendors, so they should receive it. And, and one is simply just, uh, I mean, you would have to send the, the printed version to them, either via business document, print management or something like that, but uh, it, they're not registered uh, on, as a vendor collaborator. So, uh, so what we'll do now, we'll go and click send. And you can see, you can print it out as we talked about. Uh, I'm not going to do that. I'm only interested in uh, actually the two vendors that are registers that, that, that have, that are vendor collaborators in, in, this, uh, uh, in this example. Um, the other one, if uh, they would simply just respond by documentation and, and a buyer would have to uh, manually put in the, the information. So we'll send this uh, request for um, quotation and uh, now that would have been changed to uh, let me just update here. You can see the so open, create a creator, and just kind of update it here now, and now it, it gets the status of send, right? Um, so let's try to change role now and, and go in as the role as the, one of the vendors. So I'm just gonna uh, bring in one of uh, these vendors. I have one right here. And uh, as you can see, I've changed the, the, the look and feeling with a red color so we can make sure and dis distinguish between the uh, the bidder and uh, the one sending the bid. So we'll go to the workspace and, and look at the vendor bidding. Um, and we can see that they have uh, new bid invitations and we actually have this 00037. So you can see it's not the same as 21. So let's just look at why that is. And that's because when we actually send the, the bid, we have two numbers we have to pay attention to. We have the uh, uh, quadruple 021, which is actually the case number ID. Um, so, But that's an overall case number for all the bids that's being sent out. Once we hit send on this, what's what's happening? is that we have a journal. Uh, so we have a request for quotation journal that's being created for each of the vendors that are receiving this bid information. So if I click on this link, you would then see that we have a request for quotation journals that has a number sequence specific to, uh, to that journal. So there's one journal per vendor. So each vendor will have a request for quotation ID, uh, actually, and that will be this one. And you can see for the external when the one that we saw here, that was the, the one ending in 37. So all of them have a uh, part of request for qu qu quotation case number, which is 21 and ending in 21. But uh, so, so that's the difference. That's why you see the 37 on the request for qu quotation ID that the a vendor is receiving. All right, so we are going back to uh, our other bit here. So you can see that's the uh, the request for quotation ID with the photocopies that, that uh, he's now receiving. And uh, we can now click on that um, bit and look at it. So uh, 
you can see here, you can see some basic information. We have the RFQ description that comes with it. There's the bidding guide items that we have uh, added. Right. And uh, uh, we have a questionnaire. We're not able to fill that out first, and we can see the line item and what's what's being requested. Right. With the net amount of 40,000. So in here, he's, you should be able to see the RFQ attachments, the documentation that have been attached, right? So uh, you can see we can look that. There's the header level node, um, and there's the preview with the PDF, also showing the uh, site location on the SharePoint if he has access to that as well. Okay, so um, you have that information, and then. Basically, based on this, they, they decide whether do I want to bid on this or do I want to decline. So in this case, I'm going to go ahead and bid on it. Right. So now, uh, once that's done, we are actually able to respond on a lot, a lot of these areas. So for example, I would have to complete the questionnaire if there's one uh, attached. So I'm just going to go ahead and do that. So it's just asking a few questions. It's a very simple questionnaire. It could be much more complex or much more um, uh, elaborated. So countries where the products originate, let's say it's US. Um, are you certified? Provide maintenance service related to, to this. We say yes to this. Have provided these products before. And we say yes to that. And that ends our questionnaire. Then you can see we can view some answers here also, right? So we can view the answers that was being responded to there. Okay, so um, now we have that. Um, then you can go ahead and remember what the options were that we had set the option, what they were allowed to, uh, to, um, uh, uh, to adjust. And there were some different areas. Okay, so then he can go in and check on, um, you know, um, are the quantity right? What about the unit price? Maybe that's a little bit too low. We have to go 2,200 for these. And uh, maybe I want to adjust also, let's look at the line details, uh, requested delivery date. Okay, maybe we can actually do a little a little earlier, so maybe that's a good thing, right? So we'll we'll put a different delivery date there. So you can go ahead and respond to these. You can see uh, you can also add bid attachments here if you wanted to. Um, also on the line level, um, you can see if there were any documentation on the line level from us from the uh, from the originating um, the company. Uh, creating the RFQ, you would see it here on the line level, and you can also uh, add documentation per line level here from the bidder. Okay, so once that's done, you can simply um, submit your bid. I'm going to do that. And let's say yes to this. Okay. Um, I think I had also, uh, we had the second uh, bidder I have up here, the other as well, should also have received a new bid in invitation. Uh, they had the request for quotation 38, so just going to look at that. Uh, let's just update it here. You can see that's, that's the one. Um, and they will have to do the same, right? They have to decline the bid or start bidding. Let's say that they start bidding. Uh, the only thing they do have to go and complete the questionnaire as well. So let's just go and do the same here. Uh, yes and yes. And say end there. Now that has been completed. Let's say he's happy with those prices, so he will just submit as it is. Um, and then he goes ahead and submit uh, that thing. 
Okay, so so now that's done, and uh, so we'll go back to our original and see to our original bit here, um, and we should now be able to have received uh, some of those. So you can see now what RPM replies, what we have. We have manage replies and compare replies. So we can go in and uh, look at the manage replies here. And you have uh, 37, 38, uh, 39. Uh, we didn't have a response from the um, 39, the US uh, 102, but from these two, we did have a response, right? So we can go in uh, just as well. We have uh, their line level view here what they responded you can see uh, this uh, vendor uh, external vendor one here uh, raised the unit price to 2200 so there's a net amount of 44,000 uh, the other vendor here uh, kept it at 40,000 uh, but we know that their delivery date was a little bit earlier uh, 420 than the other ones so you can then on the header level, if you go to the header level, uh, you can then go in and once you hit the edit RFQ here, you can go in and, and set uh, scoring uh, based on these different uh, scoring criteria that we have uh, set up, right? Uh, okay, that one has to be between. So I'm just going to go ahead and do that very quickly. So we can go and do that. And you'll have to do the same here on the other. Obviously, if you have a lot of vendors here, it would make sense to create an Excel template so they can fill that out. Um, then you could probably also make a more elaborate scoring scheme and then just uh, pull the totals into these uh, uh, into these fields when, once you have done but if it's just a few you can do this manually um, if you want to so so now we have uh, based on these uh, actions this was vendor two maybe had they had a be better cost than the other so we'll uh, uh, do that so so once you've done with adding these then you can go um, close this one and then you can say compare replies and um, here you can see you can see both um, on my head level and line level so if I had a lot of lines now I only had one line but if I have five ten lines I would see one header and then five ten lines right um, and then you can obviously uh, go and see. I only want to see my header level. Uh, compare those. You can see it's comparing my scores and uh, showing my total amount also. Um, so I can also see show uh, lowest net amount by line or lowest total price, right? And it will actually give me uh, the vendor that had, that had the lowest total price here. Um, so I have those uh, uh, filter actions here. So let me just say all. So once I'm, so let's say I'm going with the one with the lowest price, for example, I'm just gonna select one and it's, if I select any of these, it's gonna mark all the lines beneath it. So you can see it automatically marked both of them. Um, and then let's say, uh, we're gonna accept this bit. Okay, accepting this. Um, and now it's saying OK. Um, once we accept it, because we never, um, we didn't reject the other one, but because now we have one that won the bid, it's automatically going to the next step of actually rejecting the others, the ones that didn't win. And as you can see, so there was just one that responded other than that. So I'm not now going to. Go ahead and, and and rejecting that. So so now one was categorized as the winner, um, 
and on the other side they should be able to see uh, they should be able to see that if I'm going uh, back here and update my my loss you can see uh, this one had one awarded but lost one I think this was the one that yeah he lost this one right um, and uh, whereas the other one would uh, would would have now let's just go and update this one um, you can see there's an uh, awarded bit here where it says uh, this guy here okay and if I click on it uh, yeah, you can you can now see awarded bits here and, and that one so so that should now actually have in in our in back to our emitter remember that we had um, the system uh, we had it creating a purchase order in case we we won that so uh, so that should now be the uh, the case also um, that we have created a purchase order so let me just see here if I can let me just remove this um, ba -ba -ba -ba. let me just go to our and update these uh, you can now see this RFQ has a status accepted. There are multiple vendors. Right? Um, I will just go into it. But uh, on this side, we'll go to our procurement and all purchase order. Uh, purchase orders. So when I look in all my purchase orders here, I'll find the last one is six it is 127 was created and you can see this one will have our 20 photocopiers with the price that was uh, um, created by the, uh, uh, the bidder. And since there are now a vendor collaborator, you know, we can use the vendor collaboration process, right? Where you would go and say send for confirmation, and now that confirmation will go um, back to the bidder um, as a purchase order that they can confirm and and so on, and then follow the the standard um, vendor collaboration process in in that regard. So um, that was the steps and uh, and for and setup processes and set up for RFQs. Thank you.